I'll put it like this. Like, if you're hungry, you're going to eat, right? I mean, that's a fact. 100%. Just kind of like the locks might eat dip set. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you're right. I Actually, I don't know, man. I think it's going to be interesting when they go against each other. I, man, I, I really think Dipset's going to get the get the best of them. I'm sorry. I, I do too, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. The locks have a... It, the locks can make this very interesting, right? Especially, like, depending on how, they, how this whole thing is played out. Because... You have like too many. It, it when you really think about it, you're gonna have like six, six to six to seven artists, right, on stage at any given moment. And when we're talking dipset, you might really be talking about ten people on stage at one any point, from Forty Cal to Hell Rail to Jr. Ryder, like Freaky he made, Ziki. yeah, Uncasa, yeah. like yeah, <laughs> like you. There's mo- like there's literally moments where you can have all these artists be there, right? you have a possibility of them showcasing many artists just within their camp, not the songs that they featured themselves on or were a part of from different entities, whether it's their single careers or not. So like, it's, it's interesting, but I, I just see Dipset beating them, man. Like, I mean, granted you got all about the Benjamins, but Dipset Anthem, like then you oh, have man. summer, even like Jim Jones ball in summer, Miami, uh clock not i think it's a clocking or um or even joel santana running which is one of chris brown's first single <laughs> like yeah. i don't know how i don't know how it would match up in, in comparison to the locks but i think they just have too much firepower man like you know when i you know, we all know how dipset was when we were younger like they fucking were running shit for a certain period of time and I think that, like, when I think of the locks, I think legendary group, obviously, all all members are legends, you know what I mean? But I don't think they have what it takes to beat Dipset, though. I won't say they don't have it. I think they have what it takes. To beat Dipset? They have what it takes. This, this is going to be a close match. I'm, I'm not saying they're going to get blown out. Don't yeah, get me wrong. No, no, I just don't I'm think saying, they're going to win. I think this is going to be... A, I have Dipset winning this, but I think this is a close match. Okay. Like, I see this being, like, a two song difference like it's like there's only going to be two songs someone only wins by maybe one or two songs like it's not going to be a blowout or oh he had the four or five song lead on them because at the end of the day like the locks still have they have bad boys whole catalog so that means you're pulling little kim biggie <laughs> you probably can't even get a uh, mob deep somewhere in there dmx eve like you're they're getting they were part of DMX and Rough Riders at one point. So like yep. they, like the locks at the locks as a group. And then if you're able to get the individual songs, like I get high by Styles P and Love it. like why by Jada Kiss, like, <laughs> like. I, I got, I, all right. So on the topic of verses, just, I just thought of it while you guys were talking about the shit. What if, the next verses or future verses is like fucking Tim McGraw versus another <laughs> country artist. Reba. Yeah. <laughs> Bring Reba on. Like <laughs> that would be sick. I I it, that would be sick. I will say this. It it will probably get there when they probably say, like, okay, we've built this as big as we can in hip hop. And now let's go make the because you know. You get Tim McGraw and Reba versus each other, you might. That's like a that for real, for real. That might make them a billion dollar company. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's gonna be numbers, man. People yeah. love people love country music, man. Yeah. And that that's all races and creeds too. And people know who the fuck Reba is. Oh, absolutely. Hell, imagine if you were able to get like Lincoln Park, and like, or no, scratch that. If you actually had uh, what was it? In sync versus like Backstreet Boys. Backstreet I think they should Boys. Do it. Why not, yeah. man? You know how much numbers that would do. That would do big numbers. Yeah, man. That yeah. would probably be the biggest one because I think might be. Yeah, that would be the that would have to be because let's be real, we're all gonna watch it. Like I know I'm gonna watch. I, I'll put it like this for me. I, I'll I'll watch highlights. I don't, I don't yeah. think because I don't. I already don't watch a whole lot of these versus battles. The only two versus battles I ever watched was DMX versus Snoop Dogg. And Gucci and Jeezy. I didn't even watch Soldier Boy and Rome, uh, not Romeo, um, Bow Wow. <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> exactly. So I, I already don't watch a whole lot of these battles to begin with. So 
I can't promise and be guaranteed, but like, yeah, I'm tuning into Antique and Backstreet. But when <laughs> when I already don't watch a lot of the genre, I do enjoy listening to. It, so. I can respect that. I can respect yeah. that. I know for me, if they if that were to happen, I would watch it because I mean, I was as a kid, I was a fan of like their music also. Like I have a very wide range of um, of music. I think all of us and most kids like were '90s babies have that range of oh. Oh yeah, I liked Britney Spears and yeah. and InSync and Backstreet Boys, but don't get me wrong, I love 50 Cent, Snoop Dogg. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like no, I I definitely agree with you. Like me growing up watching pro wrestling and shit, I definitely like some rock bands that I know that I mean, I can't I'm not going to say here a lot to listeners like, yeah, I'm a I'm a connoisseur in rock music. No, but I appreciate the genre from being exposed to it. So I definitely agree with you with, with uh, okay. I definitely agree with what you're saying, Spence. Yeah. I might keep uh, going in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but back to the uh back to like this versus battle, right? Like I how what what's your opinion on because this is going to be slated for August 3rd and it's going to be in New York City, right? What's your opinion on this where it's going to be an event for the public where you're buying, people are buying tickets to, I think, I believe is Madison Square Garden. Go ahead, Lock. I'm not mad at it. I think that it's, it's dope. It's kind of like a, a concert in a sense. So I'm not mad at that. I think it's cool. It gives a chance for the, the fans to go show the support or not even show support to a particular side, but just enjoy the music from the era. I just look at it as like a, a reunion concert. And of course the event is like hits versus hits, but I think it's going to be a good time. So them selling tickets. Yeah. It's not a problem. At the end of the day, these artists in the the promotion, you know, they want to get paid. So why not open up to the public where they could come and have fans in attendance? I think the real question is how many people are going to get COVID that night? I mean, <laughs> Yeah, everybody could, will be wearing their mask. <laughs> I, I feel like that that will always become a thing. But if we're, you know, we're just talking about how do you feel? But I, I don't know. I I'm not thinking about the COVID part. And I know. I'm joking. And, and listeners, yes, COVID is important. We're not discrediting it. I was just thinking of like you know, fans just being there to enjoy the music that they they like. If they go with this approach of now putting it in stadiums, because we all know now that COVID's now that the now that we've gotten we've normalized ourselves to being back outside with the pandemic, right? Post pandemic, it's less likely people are going to want to watch something like on stay at home to watch something on their phone. Like I, I think Bow Wow Soldier Boy might have been on a weekend, but like majority of these a majority of these events now have happened like during the week right so with this being like something that's going to be in a in a venue now i i think this could be something that where i i, I wouldn't be surprised if at one point they stop doing verses and just do a versus tour because like i mean if you think about it right like if you're able to get like the right acts together let's say you you can't watch this on a live stream or whatever if you do you have to pay for it so it's like paying for a concert which we learn people are willing to do because during the COVID during uh, COVID nineteen, you can't see this, right? And let's say they're locks and dips that tour this across like several different cities. I think if you put this in New York, this would sell crazy for four or five nights. If you put this in Philly, it would do well, and like it, I think it has a possibility of just being one of those things. Uh, it. It shows that there may be a new opportunity for something like this, similar to when we used to have like the Wayne versus Drake tour. So I'm gonna disagree with you a little bit, only because I feel like one of the special things about Versus is, hey, we're doing this one night, we're pulling out 20 songs, this, that, and the third. You know what I mean? Like it's like a, it's an event. You know what I mean? Right. When you make that and you stretch it out over multiple nights in multiple cities, it loses most of the charm from that event. Now, what I think they should do, because I think what your idea isn't bad, but I think it should be implemented differently, is instead of doing one versus multiple times, why don't you do multiple verses in different cities on a more frequent basis? You can have your instincts and shit like that if you're doing it more frequently and get a different audience as well. So you're saying you you think it may be best that they 
the so you're saying like it, it would be like having like your instincts versus backstreet boys, your dipset versus locks, your Gucci Man versus Jeezy's, all like what they're doing now, but open to public venues and knock them out fast. That would be interesting. That would that would be interesting. I, but I, I do think at some point they're gonna have to create a somewhat static thing where this thing reoccurs. Only reason I say that is because like you only have there's only let's be real, there's only a finite amount of people that we want to see compete against each other. Right. And we're talking at the highest level. And at some point, the you're gonna milk it down where it'll be not 20 versus 20, but like these theoretical 10 versus tens. Right will start happening more often. So it's like, or then it becomes five versus five and so on and so forth. So like, I mean, I think at some point, I agree with you. I think that would be dope if they put those in, in venues because it's, it, it like you said, it's an event. It's like boxing. <laughs> it's like boxing at that point. It's like MMA where it's like, I get to see this one event, this one singular time. If it never happens again, only in this moment. But I think they're, they're, they're going to have to find some way of like milking this, I think though. I, I think when Nigel was saying what he was saying, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of trivia as well as the listeners. It reminded me of a moment with, once again, pro wrestling. WrestleMania two, the triple main event that had three different cities in one night, Chicago, Los Angeles, New York. And they had three, they had three separate cards and three separate main events for each thing. So what? it's like, yeah, look, look it up. So I, I see what Nigel's saying, and I can understand that approach. And it has been done before in some shape or fashion. And I think it would be a creative approach to something, too, to not also give more, but also not to water down. But also that approach can get watered down, too, if you do it so much. But if you make it, yep. if you make it like a special occasion type of thing, I think it could benefit as well. No, I, that that has a that that's a good point because I when. Definitely, like you said, if you if they're if they said it where it's like, hey, we're only doing six of these a year, so it's like you get six, you're getting six back to backs a year, but a versus a year, but it's in these certain locations. Like I, I can understand that because then it's like you only there's only one in one major city, so you might have one in New York, one in L.A., one in Atlanta, or maybe one in Chicago or somewhere Detroit. like that. It, exactly. Like, and probably have and more than likely though, they'll probably have the venue probably be close to whatever the region is that verses will come from or right. from the artists. Which so yeah, is, that makes sense. 